Bilal denounce your religion and he would say Ahad, Ahad they would say Bilal believe in Lat and Uzza and he would say Ahad, Ahad the only man that they couldn't break was Bilal why? because Bilal broke them what was Bilal before Islam? Bilal was a slave but then Bilal radiallahu anhu left the servitude of man the slavery of man and became the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was one who struggled and strived for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's mentioned in his traits that he was a man that the Prophet peace and blessings upon him kept on bringing him closer and closer and closer. Bilal bin Rabah, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, he left the city of Medina. You know why? Because he said, I could not stand the city of Al Medina without Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every street will remind me of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every other wall will remind me of him. Every corner of the city will remind me of him. He left the city of Medina. And then one night Bilal was sleeping and he saw a dream and in the dream he saw the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said oh Bilal what is it that you never come to visit us and he woke up and he traveled towards Medina and then he went to the grave of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he looked at the house of Aisha and he cried and while he was crying weeping and Hassan Hussein, they came and he started crying more because Rasulullah loved them radiallahu anhum ajma'een and then they said Ya Bilal, one last adhan for you to remind us of Rasulullah sallallahu please forgive me, I cannot call the adhan they say, just one last adhan they are the grandchildren of Rasulullah call the adhan for their sake and he went to call the adhan ويصعد على المكان الذي يقف كان عليه أيام رسول الله يؤذن ويؤذن لما قال الله أكبر الله أكبر ضجة المدينة الله أكبر الله أكبر صاح الناس في البيوت أبو عيسى رسول الله تذكر الصوت الذي كان يؤذن في أيامه صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله خرج الرجال من من بيوتهم وخرجوا من أسواقهم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أبعث رسول الله أبعث رسول الله فلما وصل بلال إلى قوله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله خنقته العبرة وما استطاع أن يكمل أذانه ونزل من على المكان الذي كان يؤذن منه قال الراوي فما عرفت المدينة يوما أشد بكاء وعويلا بعد يوم وفاة Bilal radiallahu anhu, he was born in Mecca. His origins were from Abyssinia or what we know as Ethiopia. And according to majority of the historical reports, he was born three years after the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. His full name is Bilal ibn Abi Rabah. And it's mentioned in some of the reports, his mother's name was Hamama. He was, as described by the companions, he was very dark skinned. He was tall, he was skinny. But when they describe his inner features, the Sahaba say things like, Sadiqul Qalb, he had a pure heart. Al-Amil, he was one who struggled and strived for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two titles were given to him by the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. Number one, Al-Khazin, he was the treasurer. He was the personal accountant of the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. Wal-Mu'addin, and he was the very first man 
whoever called the Adhan in the life of the Prophet peace and blessings upon him and as Prophet peace and blessings upon him says in one report that he is the leader of all those who call the Adhan and call to the prayer. Within the Islamic narrative, you often hear the word that Bilal radiallahu anhu and the Sahaba radiallahu anhu sacrificed, they sacrificed. Bilal radiallahu anhu belonged to the tribe of Bani Jaham. His mother was taken as a slave and he was sold to a man called Umayyah bin Khalf. Now Umayyah bin Khalf was one of the most ardent enemies of Islam and this was his master. So Bilal radiallahu anhu went and he sat by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He wanted to hear about this message. And it was a revolutionizing message. It was a message that even gave a slave hope. And Bilal radiallahu anhu, he embraced Islam because this Islam gave him hope. And after a little while, Umayyah bin Khalf found out about the Islam of Bilal. And the narrations mention that he tormented him. If the streets of Mecca could speak, they would tell you that these are the streets where Bilal would be dragged until his skin would peel from his body. And then they would beat him with their sticks and they would pelt him with stones. And what would Bilal say? He would say, Ahad, Ahad, one Allah. They would make him lie down. They would put armor upon him so he would boil even more. And then they would put a rock upon his chest and it would feel as though his ribs are being crushed. And then they would say, Oh Bilal, denounce your religion. And he would say, Ahad, Ahad. They would say, Bilal, believe in Lat and Uzza. And he would say, Ahad, Ahad. The only man that they couldn't break was Bilal. The only man. Why? Because Bilal broke them. And the Prophet ﷺ would see this persecution. And one day he went and he said to the Sahaba He said, isn't there anybody out there who can buy Bilal and free him? Look at the torment that he goes through. And Abu Bakr was Abu Bakr. And he went to Umayyah bin Khalf. And he said to Umayyah bin Khalf, he said, send me Bilal. And Umayyah bin Khalf said, yeah, I'll sell him to you because you're the one who corrupted him in the first place. So Abu Bakr said, how much are you going to sell him for? And he said, I'll sell him for 10 gold coins. And Abu Bakr radiallahu went home and he bought back 10 gold coins and he gave them to Umayyah. And Umayyah began to laugh. And Abu Bakr radiallahu said, oh Umayyah, what are you laughing for? And Umayyah said, Abu Bakr, I swear by Allah, if you had haggled with me and you had offered me one gold coin for Bilal, I would have sold him for one gold coin. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu turned to Umayyah and he said, Oh Umayyah, I swear by Allah, if you had haggled with me and you had asked me for a hundred gold coins for Bilal, I would have given you a hundred gold coins. Abu Bakr bought him and he freed him. And then what would Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu say about Bilal? He would say, Bilal is my master. Umar ibn Khattab would say, Abu Bakr is our master and he freed our master. And then came the battle of Badr. And Umayyah bin Khalf had no intention in participating in this battle. And Umayyah went into the battlefield. In every single battle, the Muslims had a slogan. You know what the slogan in this battle was? Ahad, Ahad. This must have shook Umayyah. And after the battle, Umayyah was taken as a prisoner and Bilal radiallahu anhu saw him. And Bilal said, the pinnacle of kufr. I will not survive if he survives. Either he lives or I live. He pushed Abdurrahman ibn Auf out of the way and he struck Umayyah and he killed him. And whilst he was killing him, what did he say? Ahad, Ahad. Every campaign the Prophet peace and blessings upon him participated in, he himself also participated. He never made an excuse for any campaign. So this again shows his steadfastness. He was amongst the first, amongst the seven, those seven companions who publicized Islam. And the Prophet peace and blessings upon him once told him that Bilal radiallahu anhu has certainly succeeded. Once the Prophet was speaking to his wife and his wife 
was saying, you know what, many times he comes home and all he says is, Qala Rasulullah, Qala Rasulullah, Qala Rasulullah. He's only talking about you, he's only talking about your teachings and sometimes I want to get informal and he does become informal but he always comes back to Qala Rasul, Qala Rasul. So the Prophet peace and blessings upon him said, I will take it upon myself to talk to him, to understand the sensitivities. But let me tell you one thing, that whatever Bilal says, I have said, don't doubt it. Because I know that he's a man of integrity and truthfulness. The Prophet peace and blessings upon him testified to his truthfulness. Whenever someone praised him, because he was very close to the Prophet peace and blessings upon him, so it was bound that people would praise him. You participated in every campaign. You're amongst those who the Prophet peace and blessings upon him said, you will definitely enter paradise. So they would praise him. So whenever they would praise him, the first thing he would do is he would lower his head. He would look down. The second thing he would do is he, was, he would close his eyes and the, and the people, the tabi'un say, we would look at him and there would be tears flowing out of his eyes. When people would praise him, he would lower his head and he would shed tears. After the person would finish talking, he would say, let me tell you who I am. You feel that I'm a person of great status and position. Let me tell you who I am. I am a dark skinned individual coming from Abyssinia. And number two, I was a slave. This is my reality and I'm still a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Upon occasion, a group of people from the Bani Buqair came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, marry our daughter to somebody. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, What about Bilal? And then they came again and they said, Marry our daughter to somebody. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, What about Bilal? And upon the third occasion they came again and they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, marry our daughter to somebody. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, What about Bilal, a man of Jannah? In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Jannatu Mushtaqun ila Bilal. Jannah longs for Bilal. We long for Jannah and Jannah longs for Bilal. Upon occasion, the Prophet ﷺ finished the Fajr Salah and he turned around and he said, Oh Bilal, what is it? What action do you do? That last night I entered into Jannah. And I heard your footsteps in front of me. What action do you do? And Bilal radiallahu anhu said, the only action that comes to my mind is that whenever my wudu breaks, I do my wudu again. And I pray two rakats. This was a man who was persecuted for deed. The most severe persecution. He did jihad. He was the muadzin of the Prophet sallallahu But why were his footsteps in Jannah? Because every time his wudu broke, he did wudu and he prayed two rakats. Who did he call to give the adhan? Who did he call? He called Bilal radiallahu anhu. Why did he call Bilal? They often say because he had the loudest voice. But I say that Prophet sallallahu called Bilal radiallahu anhu because he proclaimed tawheed in the most difficult of times. And now he was going to proclaim tawheed openly. By Allah, every single Sahabi would have given their life to be known as the Mu'addin of the Prophet ﷺ. What greater honor could there be that you call the people to Salah and the Prophet ﷺ lead the people in Salah? What greater honor could there be? But the greatest honor for Bilal must have been the conquest of Makkah. Can you imagine all the Sahaba radiallahu anhum who were there in the Bayat al-Ridwan were there. All the Sahaba who were participants in the Battle of Badr were there. The ten who were guaranteed Jannah by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were there. The four Khulafai Rashidun, two of them the son-in-laws of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, two of them the father-in-laws of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and all the Mushrikeen are there. But who did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam choose? Who did he choose to ascend the Kaaba? The Kaaba was the most holiest place in the eyes of the Muslims and in the eyes of the Mushrikeen. Who did the Prophet ﷺ choose? He chose Bilal. He said, Bilal, stand up and ascend the roof of the Kaaba and give the Azan, call on to Tawheed. The Prophet ﷺ could have chosen Abu Bakr 
or he could have chosen Umar or Abdurrahman ibn Auf. He chose none of them. He chose Bilal radiallahu anhu. Because the Prophet sallallahu dealt with these issues of racism 1400 years ago. When Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu said to Bilal, you son of a black woman. And Bilal radiallahu anhu got insulted and he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, O Messenger of Allah, this is what Abu Dhar has said to me. And the Prophet ﷺ called Abu Dhar. He said, Oh Abu Dhar, you are a man who still has the traits of ignorance in him, the pre-Islamic traits. And then the Prophet ﷺ said something really profound. He said, Oh Abu Dhar, me Muhammad, I am equally the son of a black woman as I am the son of a white woman. Because the Prophet ﷺ was breastfed by a black woman. The Prophet ﷺ dealt with the issues of racism 1400 years ago. And throughout the life of the Prophet ﷺ, Bilal ﷺ remained in the company of the Prophet ﷺ. In journey or at home, he was the Mu'addin of the Prophet ﷺ. In every single battle of the Prophet ﷺ, he participated. And when the Prophet ﷺ was ill, final illness, the narration mentioned that Bilal ﷺ would often give the adhan and then he would call the Messenger of Allah. And the Messenger of Allah hadn't come out. So he went to call the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he was becoming conscious and then unconscious. And Bilal said, Wa huzna. He said, what grief. He said, I wish my mother had never given me birth that I see this day. Or that I had died before seeing this day. And then Bilal went to give the adhan and he became unconscious. And then when the Prophet ﷺ passed away, the narrations mention that the Prophet ﷺ body was still not buried. And Bilal gave the adhan. And when he reached, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Often when he would reach this state, the Prophet ﷺ would come out of the house which was adjacent to the masjid. And he looked and there was no messenger ﷺ. And the narration mentioned that Bilal began to choke. And he began to cry and all those around him began to cry. And for the next three days, Bilal radiallahu anhu tried to give the adhan. Every time he would reach, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, he would begin to choke. And then he went to Abu Bakr and he said, Abu Bakr, because he couldn't bear to remain in Medina without the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Abu Bakr, allow me to leave. Because I heard the Prophet ﷺ mention the virtue of jihad, I want to do jihad. And Abu Bakr said, no, Bilal, you stay with me. I need you. And Abu Bilal radiallahu said, Abu Bakr, if you freed me for yourself, then keep me. But if you freed me for the sake of Allah, then let me go. And Abu Bakr radiallahu allowed him to go. And he went into jihad. And then one night, Abu Bilal radiallahu was sleeping. And he saw a dream. And in the dream, he saw the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh Bilal, what is it that you never come to visit us? And he woke up and he traveled towards Medina. And when he reached Medina, he lay on the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, remembering his Habib. And Hassan and Hussein came. And they said, Oh Bilal, give the adhan. And it was a request of the grandchildren of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Bilal radiallahu anhu got up and he gave the adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the narration mentioned that Medina erupted. It erupted because it brought back the memory of the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The men and women came out of their house, they were ripping their clothes, tearing their hair out. Because it reminded them of the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Bilal he tried to stay in Medina, but he found it difficult. It would remind him of the Prophet ﷺ, and he couldn't bear to remain in Medina, and he left. And then came the occasion of the conquest of Masjid Al-Aqsa. And the patriarch said that I will only give the key to Umar ibn al-Khattab. And Umar who traveled from Medina to Masjid Al-Aqsa. And all the Sahaba were there. Abu Baydat ibn al-Jarrah, Sharhbil ibn Hasana, Khalid ibn Walid, Muadh ibn Jabal. And they went up to Umar and they said, Oh Umar, request Bilal to give the adhan. And Umar asked Bilal to give the adhan. 
And the narration mentioned that when Bilal reached Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, those beards of the Sahaba when they embraced Islam, which were black and now had become grey, they became drenched with tears. There was no Sahabi whose beard was not drenched. They had to console Umar ibn al Khattab because it reminded them of being in the company of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was amazing virtue for Bilal. For he gave a dhan in the haram in Makkah, in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and also in masjid al-Aqsa. All three of the most holiest places. And then when Bilal radiallahu anhu, he passed away. And the narration mentioned in Damascus, he was passing away. And his wife said, Wahuzna. She said, What grief, what sadness. And Bilal said, La. He said, Say, Wa farha. He said, What happiness, what happiness. Ghadan sa alqi Muhammadan wa ashaba. He said, Tomorrow I will meet the Prophet وسلم, and the companions. And Bilal radiallahu anhu passed away in the 20th year of Hijrah. He's buried in Damascus, but this was a man that he may be buried here, but by Allah, he's destined for Jannah. He didn't leave any children behind him. Actually, he left no wealth behind him. He died in relative poverty. But you know what the inheritance of Bilal was? It was the adha. From generation to generation, the Muslims have adopted the adha. And this is the sunnah of Bilal radiallahu anhu. From Australia to Canada, from China to Argentina, from Mauritius to Iceland, a million times a day the adhan is given. A million times a day the sunnah of Bilal is revived. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate the likes of Bilal radiallahu anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us with Bilal and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of judgment. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us all in Jannah of the Khalzaq. Assalamu alaikum.